This is ETV-1, the first electric test vehicle developed for the U.S. Department of Energy's near-term electric vehicle program. It is the result of two years of hard work, two years of bringing together the best ideas of a dedicated team of scientists and engineers. Well, you, in your simulations, George, you were assuming we could put essentially unlimited current, like 300 amps or thereabouts, into the battery. Is that right? That is correct. These technical people were presented with a challenge to design an advanced electric vehicle that would be suitable for mass production in the mid-1980s. A car like ETV-1 doesn't just happen. Like the vehicles from the space program, it was designed systematically from the ground up to meet specific goals. Acceleration from 0 to 30 miles per hour in just 9 seconds ability to maintain 50 miles per hour up a mile long 5% grade, passing speed of 60 miles per hour. And the target range for stop and go urban driving was 75 miles between battery charges with a full payload of four passengers. Another factor was purchase price. If produced in quantities of 100,000 or more per year, it should be available for the price equivalent of $5,000 in 1975 dollars, or about $6,400 in 1979. Its life cycle cost should not exceed 15 cents per mile based on 100,000 miles in 10 years. Based on these objectives and more, the ultimate design of the car evolved. The result is a four-passenger, front-wheel drive subcompact, powered by a 20-horsepower electric motor. It represents a new high mark in electric vehicle technology. After that, I think it, we could put it on extender cables and uh, operate it outside of the vehicle. But, uh, As prime contractors performing under the technical management of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, Scientists and engineers at the General Electric Research and Development Center in Schenectady, New York, tackled the challenge of designing a technically advanced and reliable drive system for ETV-1. Of special importance was ensuring electrical safety during operation and maintenance. Their major goal was to devise the most efficient method for controlling the electric motor. For the more efficiently the motor could be controlled, the farther the car could go between recharges. Based on extensive computer simulation, the engineers decided to regulate the motor through separate electrical control circuits for the armature, the rotating core, and field, the outer windings. They also chose to equip the car with regenerative braking. When the brakes are applied, the motor becomes a generator that helps to recharge the batteries, squeezing out more miles between charge-ups. And uh, it looks like we can get a very significant range improvement regenerative braking, but we're concerned about a problem, uh, about how much energy we can really put back into the battery in, during a short time period. So, As basic decisions about the drive system were made, engineers began assembling experimental circuits for the central electronic assembly, called the power conditioning unit, that controls all the electricity running through the vehicle. The researchers decided on a package of 18 6-volt batteries to provide the electrical energy to move the car. With 400 amps of current available, the peak power is equivalent to 1,040 watt bulbs operating simultaneously. The key to controlling all this power is a low-cost, high-power, solid-state electronic device called a Darlington transistor. This device can turn all the current from the batteries on or off in a millionth of a second. The heart of the Darlington transistor is a silicon chip half the size of a postage stamp. The chip is mounted in a special copper cooling package, two of which are put together in a power module a tenth the cost and half the size of previous devices with the same capability. Later, four of these power modules will become part of the power conditioning unit. Power transistors based on this technology will be commercially available in the future.
Meanwhile, in Pittsfield, Massachusetts, experts in the construction of rugged electronic systems prepared to build the final power conditioning unit for ETV-1. Based on working models constructed in Schenectady, computers traced out designs for the unit's printed circuit boards. In Schenectady, engineers began work on the car's full-time brain, a microcomputer. It provides overall electrical control for the vehicle by directing the switching of the power conditioning unit for forward and reverse. Acceleration. Regenerative braking. And battery charging. Next, the power conditioning unit was tested. Connected to a bank of batteries, like those in the car, it operated an electric motor bolted to a heavy flywheel. Under manual control, without the microcomputer, the power conditioning unit showed that it could start and stop a 3,800-pound car efficiently. As this milestone was reached, assembly of the final power control units, incorporating the microcomputer, was begun. Once completed, these units were tested under load to prove conclusively that they would work in the completed electric vehicle. These are the key issues that seem to be pointing towards going with this rotated cell design and changing the plates 90 degrees. Is there anything at the same time, in Milwaukee, scientists and engineers at Globe Union Incorporated were designing batteries for ETV-1. Their challenge was to find new ways to store more electrical energy in the batteries without adding more weight. The completed car already would be heavy in comparison with conventional cars of the same size. The team met the challenge, and a battery with 25% more storage capacity per pound emerged from their drawing boards and design computers. Tests on prototype batteries confirmed this increase in storage capacity, which the researchers achieved by a number of innovations, including turning the plates 90 degrees from their location in conventional cells. The new batteries have an anticipated life of 500 charge discharge cycles, and maintenance is simplified. Water levels in all the batteries can be topped up through a common filler tube.